Hello and welcome back to the Heat Check Podcast, the Miami Herald's Miami Heat Podcast. We are back after a, a few weeks hiatus. I am David Wilson and I'm joined, as always, on the other line by Anthony Chang, our Heat Beat writer here at the Herald. Anthony, what is up? Much, David. You, I couldn't bear to do this without you. You were gone for two weeks. I said, we're taking a break. I'm not doing this without David. Um, so I'm glad you're back. Yeah, I mean, I, we were just talking right before uh, we started recording. It does not feel like I've missed very much in these two weeks, at least in Heat World. Um, no. You know, obviously some other news uh, around Miami sports scene. Um, but Just a uh, little bit. Yeah, I, just a little bit. Well, I was back in time for, for, the, sure. uh, for the Dolphins stuff that happened on uh, Tuesday. Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than I guess Summer League finished while I was gone. We could have done our, our Summer League recap pod, but... I think we had exhausted all of our summer league takes uh, by the last time we talked. So um, good time for a vacation. Uh, still feels like not a whole lot going on in Heat World. It, obviously, the Donovan Mitchell, like ev- all the NBA topics are the exact same as when I left. It's like, where is Donovan Mitchell going to go? Is Kevin Durant actually going to get yeah. traded? Um, but, you know, the the Heat have obviously been, been in that a little bit, um, but also have, you know, the I, I guess they've, started to sort of move on or at least kind of suggest they are moving on through the grapevine. So, um, yeah, it's good to be back though. Yeah. You want to tell people where you were? You were yeah. Were you... I was in Italy for like nine, 10 days, uh, for my long delayed honeymoon. Um, got married last year and didn't want to, you know, with COVID didn't want to probably could have gone last year. Cause it's actually like a nice little window right when it happened, but you know, you didn't want to plan it ahead of time and then uh, yeah. not know what was going to happen. Um, I did have one uh, very good Heat interaction while I was there, specifically a Dion Waiters oh. interaction. So I don't know if the if Heat culture lives internationally, but Dion Waiters appreciation certainly does. Um, yeah, I have I have one piece of Heat merchandise. Uh, I, at the risk of jeopardizing my credibility here, I, I do own one Miami Heat jersey T-shirt. Uh, People know uh, who've listened to this podcast a lot. No, I, I did. I you know I didn't grow up a Heat fan, but I went to Syracuse, so I have a Vice Knights Dion Waiters jersey um, because I think it's the best jersey that anyone's put out in the NBA in the last couple of years. And uh, Dion's my guy. We were freshmen together at Syracuse at the same time. Obviously, we didn't graduate together because he was only there for two years. But you know that's my guy. Um, so I was wearing this jersey walking up. I was in. Um, Positano, which is a beach town in Italy on like a giant mountain. I'm sure people have seen it on Instagram. Um, I was walking up up that, that big hill up to my uh, Airbnb, which my phone said was 22 flights of stairs oh uh, up the mountain. Um, and a guy, first of all, like a, a normal American guy kind of like walks past me and says, go heat. And I kind of like, because I forget I'm wearing it. Like I'm like, yeah. Well, <laughs> And I'm like, oh, and then I was, I was saying to my wife, like, you know, it's funny. I think of this as a Dion Waiters jersey. And then uh, an Italian guy scooters past me, zips right by me, and in an extremely Italian accent says, Dion Waiters. <laughs> <laughs> so um, people like Dion Waiters abroad. Uh, I don't know how they feel about the heat, but I, I was glad to hear that, that the cult of Dion is alive and well in southern Italy. Waiters Island extends. Waiters yeah. Island, yeah, Sicily or uh, uh, it. Where was I? Capri. Capri might as well be D, might as well be Waiters Island. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. With Dean Waiters is uh, is an international superstar. He is. And that's a take. That's a takeaway from your honeymoon. That is the big takeaway from my honeymoon. <laughs> um, what have you been up to these last couple of weeks? Um, well, actually, I took this week off. Um, by doing this pod because. You know, it's not really, this is not really, this is not really work. I mean, yeah. Is, we're just, talking we're just having it. a good but, time. Exactly. Um, but, you know, just staying home, we're getting, we're expecting our second baby at the end of the month. So mm-hmm. um, getting ready for that. Actually, un- our house is under construction because we're trying to expand the house for um, a second baby to make room for it. But it's not great timing because we're not going to be done in time. So we'll oh, be no. having loud drilling around our oh, house for the next yeah. two, three months. Um, but. Good yeah. slow 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 time. This is, this is a good time of year for NBA beat writers because um, there's just not a lot going on, so we're able to take some time off. Yeah, it's funny. The NBA off season really like it doesn't start when the season ends. It starts no. the season ends. 
Um, it starts right after summer league, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is basically a month after the season ends. At that point. Yeah, you go yeah. Stra- obviously straight into draft when the heat when you go as far as the heat when you go as far. Yeah, you know, you go right into the draft basically, and then free agency, agency summer league. league. So, yeah. um, but like I said, um, it feels like we're still talking about all the same top. You sent me an outline yesterday, and I kind of like did you just copy and paste the outline? I copy and pasted it time? from a month ago. Yeah, yeah that's, exactly. that's the exact same one. Um, so, so KD. <laughs> Uh, Donovan Mitchell still dominating kind of all NBA conversation right now uh, for the most part. Uh, I guess Kyrie too, but, but we kind of have like uh, we've we've kind of ignored him a little bit on this podcast. But obviously Mitchell and and Durant, the big two. Um, so take us through quickly just what the Heat um, kind of put out there in the in the last two weeks here, and and what you think that means uh, about Miami's potential pursuit. Uh, for these two all-stars. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a secret that Brooklyn wants the world for Kevin right. Durant. Like, they want a historic return for Kevin Durant, and as they should, right? I mean, I understand Brooklyn's perspective here, point of view, and, and I understand other teams saying, well, this guy's on a, you have no leverage. He wants out. He has four years left on his deal. He's going to be 34 in a month. He's coming off a serious Achilles injury that not many people, compl- you know, are – and can return back to you know, the player they were, even though we've seen KD play very well the last two years. He's older, and he's, the fact is he had that Achilles injury. So kind of both – I understand both sides. Um, mm-hmm. But where we are now is, again, Brooklyn wants a lot. No team really has been willing to meet that, that asking price. Um, as far as the heat goes, as of now, and I don't see it changing, honestly, but as of now, they don't want to include Bam and Abai on any trade. Obviously, Jimmy Butler is also off the table. Um, so the best that he can do is Tyler Hero. Um, you know, I guess, you know, to make salaries work, Duncan and Kyle. And three first, if they unlock the first round pick with OKC, three first round picks like we've spoken about, I think two mm-hmm. or three pick swaps. Um, that's the best they can do. And from everything we've heard, that's, you know, it's obviously not enough for Brooklyn. They, they haven't made that deal yet. Um, and that's where we are. I think teams are waiting to see – when camp gets closer, I mean, we're in August right now, like we said, this is a dead time. Yeah. When camp gets closer, mid-September, late September, even into camp before the season, those weeks leading up to the regular season, will Brooklyn uh, blink a little bit and lower the asking price because they know KD doesn't want to play there. The longer this goes, they're going to lose more leverage. Maybe KD makes a mess of it. Or will Brooklyn really take Kevin Durant into the season and see how it goes? Will, I mean, will Kevin Durant hold out? Will he play? If he plays, does Brooklyn play really well if they have Kyrie and him and Ben Simmons healthy and all of a sudden KD wants to stay because they start 10-2? and two? Um, I think that's, that's what happens here. Which one, you know, is, is Brooklyn really willing to take Kevin Durant into camp and into the season? If not, then they're probably going to have to lower the asking price and then that then that's where things probably will pick up. Yeah. I guess the problem with that is if they lower the asking price, then that means... Other like, other teams are yeah. yeah the low asking price. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Jalen Brown offers might be the, might be the one they take, right? You're right. Thinking, yeah. What do you make of uh? Did that was it? Zach, I think it was Zach Lowe, right? He wrote the story that I think it was right before yeah. I left, maybe about the NBA Hero. executives kind of divide on on opinions about Tyler Hero. What do you make of that story? I mean, it's not surprising because yeah. I mean, I feel like Tyler Hero is a very polarizing player, even just in Heat world, right? Like yeah, just definitely. fans alone, like on Twitter, like some people love him and they think he's great. Other people think he's he, he's not a real NBA starter or a guy who can lead you because he's not a you know great defender and in the playoffs he can play off the he can be played off the court. Um, so uh, it's not surprising because I I could see it. Like there's Tyler Hero is obviously very skilled. You could yeah. argue. I know Jimmy just had a historic postseason run but you could argue Tyler Hero is the best scorer on the team mm-hmm. he was in the regular season like I know he yeah. didn't lead the league in scoring but just minutes wise usage right. wise like what he can do on all three levels create his own shot he is the best natural scorer on the team um but there are flaws in his game but then again he's 22 I think people forget that like he's 22 years old um he's still very young he's gonna get better so it didn't surprise me because I kind of see it just locally like he's a very polarizing player and, you know, again, if the Heat aren't willing to give up Jimmy or Bam, which, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I, I agree with. I don't think I would trade Bam in the Kevin Grant deal because I don't know what that leaves you with as far as, like, does it make you that much better, right, if you're trading Bam and, and other pieces and picks and swaps 
for for a 34 year old to pair with a guy who's going to be 36, Kyle Lowry, and yeah. a guy who's going to be 33 and Jimmy Butler. Like your window is very very small, and you have nothing on the back end of that. Um, so I get that. But if you're not willing to trade Bam and Jimmy, the only way you get that third star is if some team really likes Tyler because that's your best piece. Unless Jovic all of a sudden develops into a star, like Tyler is your best trade piece. Like that's going to be the guy who who's the star of whatever trade package you put together. So really, whether you can get that third like star to pair with Bam and Jimmy is going to depend on how teams feel about Tyler. And so far, as of right now, it doesn't seem like they pro- they view him as highly maybe as the Heat would have thought entering the summer. Yeah. And I don't know. that Some of that's probably the postseason he had. He didn't have a great postseason. I mean, things this might be a different conversation if Tyler would have averaged 25 points a game mm-hmm. uh, in the playoffs and, and played just like he did in the regular yeah, season. Yeah, if you threw his bubble postseason on top of yeah. this regular season, we're, we're probably talking about him a little bit differently. The other path to getting a, another a third star is if Tyler Hero becomes that star, right? Like, yeah, that too. Right. Thing. So, yeah. you know, I... I I get why Brooklyn is is you know really balking at the at a Tyler Hero package. Um, you know they they have to, you know I, I think in some ways Tyler Hero probably uh, in some ways he might be more valuable than he is just as a player because you can really kind of market him as like right. a star. I think even if he's not like you you see it with the Heat. You know he's not an All Star. He was obviously Six Man of the Year, which is like a big award and all that, and um, you know has. He's still young, so he, like he could be an all star, but the Heat basically like can market him as one of the faces of the franchise because he's got uh, a big personality. Uh, he's white, which which helps in a lot of markets, I think. Right, uh, right. Although Miami, not necessarily. We're you know we're we're a very diverse market down here, but I think in certain markets, uh, he that would make him a little bit more marketable. Um, and obviously, he's like a fun player to watch and. He's a guy who, if you you know, if you throw him on like a crappy Jazz team next year, he'll probably average twenty eight points per game, right? right. Yeah, he's gonna start at shooting guard and lead the team in shots and maybe lead the NBA in shots, right? Like, so there, there, I think there, he might be. I, I, I could see some teams talking them into him, talking themselves into him as like a face of the franchise type guy. I get why Brooklyn is not because they. If they're going to trade Kevin Durant, they need to. It's going to be about the picks, I think, for them. And if you're giving, if you're swapping Kevin Durant for Tyler Hero, you're not. You know, if they, if they swap Kevin Durant for Bam, they can basically say, oh, they can convince themselves that okay, like the next couple picks we get from these guys are going to be thirty, you know, twenty-eight, th- twenty-nine, thirty. But uh, four years from now, they might be right. terrible. Yeah, um, right. If you if you swap Hero for for Durant and Bam is still around, you're and you trust Pat Riley and Andy Ellsberg to just make that team always good. You're not getting that. That's why I still think Hero makes more sense as the trade chip with the Jazz. Um, partially the pro- the pro- some of the marketing stuff I, I mentioned, yeah. and then um, also because of you know Donovan Mitchell is just not as as good a player, and they've already kind of started their rebuild, and and I, I think just they're. They're going to be as concerned just with the volume of picks, kind of in the same way that the Thunder are, as opposed to um, the player they get the, back. The player yeah. that they're getting back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all I was. Gonna, that's the point I was going to make. There is like, yes, Donovan Mitchell has been linked to, has been linked to the Heat for a while, and Bam and him are friends. Donovan Mitchell spends a lot of time in Miami. It would make sense, but Utah, from everything we've heard, mm-hmm. Danny Ainge's reputation, they want picks. Yeah, and that's why the Knicks were such a, like, were considered the front runner, I guess, until a few days ago when now those talks have stalled. But um, they have eight tradable first round picks. Not that they were going to include all eight, but they could include five. They could include mm-hmm. six. Plus, Donovan Mitchell wants to play in, you know, they're thinking he wants to play in New York. He's from that area. He's a Mets fan. He's, he spends all spends a lot of time in New York. Um, the Heat only have right now two picks that they could trade. They can get to three, like we just said, but that can't compete with a team like the Knicks. They're going to throw in a handful right. and also have a, a few, you know, even without trading R.J. Barry, they still have a few young pieces that are intriguing that could get Utah's attention. So if New York wants Donovan Mitchell, like, they They're have a better package yeah, yeah. Than, but, than the Heat. So that's the problem. I, I think with Brooklyn, it's less about the – I mean, obviously they want picks, but it's less about the picks and more about the players they get back because they're looking to stay competitive, right, because all right. their picks belong to Houston – 
Um, right? It's, yeah, Houston has all their picks. So, Houston, yeah. Um, what point? You know, it's not tanking. Really, doesn't do anything for them because they don't have their own picks. Um, so they, they're looking to stay competitive. So that's kind of it's. Yes, they want both want the best p- possible packages in return, but they're looking for two different things. And right now, the Heat doesn't have any of them because, obviously, Brooklyn wants a young All Star, which I, don't, I guess they don't consider Tyler to be that. Mm-hmm. And Utah wants a ton of picks, and the Heat have a okay. few they could trade, but they just don't have enough. Yeah, they've got an okay combination of the two, depending on how you feel about Tyler Hero. Where obviously they have a lot of they've got access to a lot of their picks, even if you're not expecting them to be high picks. Um, but it seems, like you said, it seems like both Brooklyn and Utah like have some hangups on, on some of the uh, some of what Miami can offer. But would you would you include Bam in a Kevin Durant trade? If that if you knew this would yeah, be yeah, I, I said it from the beginning. I, I still think I would. Um, although you know, as a uh, a childhood Nationals fan, I'm kind of reeling from the Juan Soto thing. And obviously, mm-hmm. Juan Soto is like a different level of player than Bam. But like, I get the like. You don't want to trade a guy who you think is going to be the face of the franchise for a decade. Like, that sucks for the fans. Obviously, it's different if you're getting Kevin Durant back and, you know, maybe you win a championship with Kevin Durant and Jimmy Butler and and all as well. Um, I still think I would do it, um, but I I get why the Heat don't want to do it, and I get why the Heat fans might not want to do it. I mean, the question, I mean, yes, like, Kevin Durant is a top 10 player of all time. He's still very, very good, even at 34. But, like, is that team a lot better than it is right now if you're trading, let's say, Kyle, Bam, Bam and another minimum guy in picks? Like, who's your center, right? I mean, is it Omar yeah. Yurt 7? Is it Dwayne Dedman? Are you winning a championship with that? Can you depend on Jimmy and Kevin Durant to carry that heavy of a load? I just don't know. Like, I, I think that's my biggest hang-up. Like, I, I would only trade Bam if it means you're, like, the favorite to win a championship. I don't think they are. I, I think with that no, deal, I don't think so either, but... they're maybe a third best, probably still a third best team in the East behind Milwaukee and Boston, even at that point. Like, I, I could I could totally see them being like kind of still behind Boston and Milwaukee. Yeah. So um, I, I just, I don't think I could do it for that reason. Like, it just doesn't elevate them enough for me to give up a guy who's, you know, franchise cornerstone, has his flaws for sure, but is so unique. And it's kind of irreplaceable on the defensive end. Yeah, and it's 25 years no, old. Yeah, I guess my my argument for it would basically be it's the best way to the the best clearest way to take the biggest jump in terms of sure. Jump. Like you know, this team could win a championship next year without doing anything. Um, obviously, you're you're always trying to increase your chances and assume it. Like I'm saying this that yes, I would trade Bam for Kevin Durant. And now this is assuming you can't get someone else for Tyler Hero, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't see another way. Like like you said, how do you add a third star? I guess you can keep waiting and hope Tyler Hero either develops and, and trust that, just that you've got three potential all-stars, plus Kyle Lowry, plus, you know, Nikola Jovic. Like, you, you've got a, a pretty solid core with a couple really interesting young guys. Um, or you could hope that next offseason, maybe someone wants Tyler Hero in a, in a trade. But um, I don't know. You're just never going to get anyone better than, than Kevin Durant. Uh, obviously, you don't want to sacrifice someone as good as, as Bam Adebayo. Um, but I think, you know, if you trade for Kevin Durant, like you said, you kind of gut the roster. Maybe you're not as good this year, but then you go into next offseason knowing you have Jimmy and, and Kevin Durant. And, you know, it's not a one-year window with those guys. It's obviously it's like, a tight window. Yeah, because Three we, three years, let's say. Yeah, yeah three, three years. years. Uh, you got to win a championship in one of those three years. It probably wouldn't be this coming year, but but I think – uh, you kind of get that clarity of like we've got these guys for X number of years. Um, we're the Miami Heat. We we figure out how to get good players and put good rosters around guys. Like I, I'd kind of trust um, those two superstars and and myself uh, in in a trade like that. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair, and and I get that point of it too. I just it's hard for me to get to that to get to that point of being convinced like Bam should be included just for the yeah. reasons I listed. But I think. I think in September, again, when practice gets closer, when things start to pick up, like the buzz is going to start again. Yeah, and I'm sure that yeah, he will like be part of the conversation. All, yeah. Right, like yeah. guys are on vacation. Yeah. Like obviously, no one's away from their phone for too long. But yeah, but guys are on vacation. Guys out of office right now. There was urgency to get it done. 
you know, when like summer, not, not a sort of urgency, but everyone was together in summer league. Like there were reasons it was maybe going to get done quickly. Um, now there's no urgency. Like what, what's your rush until like, like you said, there's a couple of deadlines. Like if Tyler Hero signs his extension, well, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, honestly, like you kind of have to wait a little bit. Cause like Nikola Jovic is going to be in this deal. So you have to get a month out from when he signed his, uh, which we're probably getting, which is cool. coming up. Yeah, right? it's coming yeah. up. It's probably so like, might be, might be. It might have been yesterday. I don't know. It's one of these days. Yeah, but up. obviously there's other like other rookies. I'm sure it yeah. took like we're, we we've got a couple of th- things that we have to wait on, and then there's nothing to rush for. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's we we got some time. I think, but obviously things can happen at any moment if someone ups their offer and all of a sudden someone pulls the trigger. Yeah, and I think that's what Brooklyn's waiting for, like someone to maybe yeah. just panic and overpay, right? But yeah. it hasn't I happened think the yet. Heat were probably hoping that Brooklyn was going to panic and trade Kevin Durant right away. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and I mean, that's the thing. Who's going to blink first? So that's still to be determined. But um, I think also something else that could accelerate this entire process or kind of change the conversation is if Kevin Durant says something publicly, like he has been totally quiet. He yeah. hasn't really put any pressure, any public pressure on the Nets. Um, if he comes out and says... I only want to play for the Heat in Phoenix, yeah. and I'm not reporting to camp. I want to get out of here. I will not report to camp. Like, that changes things, and that puts more pressure on Brooklyn. So I wouldn't be surprised if this continues, Kevin, if really Kevin Durant still wants out, like, him to say something, because that might be his, that might be the most effective thing he can do at this point if he really wants to be moved. Um, I'm kind of surprised we haven't heard from him yet, but he's probably trying to let Brooklyn deal with it for now. There is time, but at some point, he's, I'm guessing he'll probably – have to step in and do something. All right. So while I was gone, you and the entire Heat beat basically reported the Heat are uh, not, you know, we, like you said, <clears throat> before we started, you kind of like joked, like uh, everyone's been writing that uh, the Heat are in a holding pattern waiting for this. Um, everyone on the Heat beat basically reported like, you know, the Heat feel good about this roster. They don't, they don't consider this a holding pattern situation. They're not stopping everything to wait on Kevin Durant. Um, obviously if they're not in a holding pattern and that could mean they make some other move. We obviously have talked mostly about the power forward position. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Do you, do you kind of buy that, that they they would make, do something while that Kevin Durant, Donovan Mitchell possibility is, is still looming out there? Or uh, do you kind of think they're, it's just posturing a little bit and they, they gotta, they gotta hang on to all their assets for a move like that. I think to hold on to their assets as long as possible. Yeah. And I just don't see them making a move for like a guy like Harrison Barnes or Miles Turner or anybody like that. Um, and then giving up any chance they have at Kevin Durant, um, Donovan Mitchell, or any other star. Like even if after these two guys are traded, if they're traded in the next few months, like there's going to be another star that becomes available. And yeah, I guess if Tyler Hero signs the extension, like you can't move, you can't make that move anyway. But Next offseason, you would be able to. Mm-hmm. And if you give away, you know, salary and and multiple picks or even one pick, like we've seen it, like you need as many picks as possible. Even one pick can be the difference between making a deal and not making one. So I, I, I don't think they'll make a move that makes you makes them marginally, but just marginally better when we know they want a star, right? That's what they're in the game for. They're not in the game for, you know, again, no. I, Harrison Mars is a fine player, but he's not a star. Right, he's not going to make right. you all of a sudden a favorite in the East. He makes you a little bit better. Maybe you win one more game, gives you more depth to the power forward spot. But I don't think they would um, give up the opportunity um, to trade for a star for just for getting, you know, just a, a rotation player, pretty much. Yeah, I think that that's the right move right now, right? Like, like you said, the Heat feel pretty good about this roster. Um, you know, we we talked about Haywood Highsmith on this program. Like if he is if he has a Max Struess esque season, like all of a sudden your your power forward position is in pretty good shape. And I I have to think that he you know Max Struess was really good last year. Like I don't know if you're banking on him being Max Struess right away, but like you know the Heat feel good about their development pipeline. They feel good about what they saw from him in summer league. Like they probably feel better about their roster than the outside. You know, then then just kind of like the average person staring at their roster and being like, who's going to play power forward for this team? Because they they know, because the Heat do this every year where a guy kind of comes out of nowhere and has a good season. Um, but yeah, it like you you said like does even Kevin Durant for Bam make them better than the third best team in the in the East? Like 
definitely not getting one of these guys makes them no. completely ahead of no. <laughs> Boston no, or, definitely or not. Milwaukee. Definitely you're, not. you're waiting for the big swing here. And yeah. um, obviously, like you said, the Tyler extension, Tyler Hero extension would complicate things, but, you know, they've got until the trade deadline to, to figure out ways to improve this team. If, if, if we get to January and Donovan Mitchell has been traded to New York and it's, and Kevin Durant is suddenly yeah, that's time. in Brooklyn, like then, you know, you're, you're out of bullets there a little bit and you're worrying about, you know, making the, uh, like by, by the trade deadline, you'll know whether you can get Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell and you can pivot accordingly. Yeah, and there might be a buyout guy who becomes available. Right, you exactly. Throw up any assets, like or another star could become available. Right, that's it. Like they have time, and I think we forgot again that this roster. I know it is not PG Tucker, but really, the entire similar. roster is back. Yeah. Really similar to last year, where finished one shot away from making the finals, was injured for most of the playoffs, um, but still came a shot away from making the finals. Like right. this is still a good roster, and I think yes, they have a glaring hole power forward. That's a problem. But I think they can survive in the regular season where, you know, there isn't money. Like, you're not facing the same team multiple times, obviously, like multiple times, multiple nights in a row. It's there's not a ton of preparation, like exposing teams weaknesses like Jimmy could play the four. I don't think Jimmy's going to start at the four. Mm -hmm. but I would expect in closing time, like Jimmy's going to be at the four. And I think honestly, I think he'd be very good there. Like, I think that might be with some of the Heat's best lineups with Jimmy at the four. This team has a lot of depth at guard. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 play more. Tyler Hero is like one of the best close. Has historically yeah. been one of the better best closers on this lot, roster. Obviously, Kyle Lowry. Like, then if you Victor Oladipo, if he's Victor Oladipo, here. Max Struess. Like, they got a lot of wings. Uh, obviously, yeah. Duncan. Maybe Duncan Robinson. Like, puts together a, a season more similar to the two or three years ago than he did last year. And you know, he's probably not a closing guy come playoff time, but he's eaten a lot of minutes at, at the two or the three. Like. They're really deep on the wing where I, I don't worry about their closing time lineup. I worry about right, you know, the starting lineup doesn't matter, but like I worry about the starting lineup and the rotations right. that get you to closing time and closing yeah. time in the playoffs in particular. My, my, my prediction is that Caleb probably will start if this is the roster. Caleb starts at the four. Yeah. Maybe Highwood Highsmith gets some minutes. Jovic, I'm not expecting to play very much early on, obviously. Darius Days is interesting. Mm -hmm. College player, experienced college player. Has some of that like skill set that he play like. the four sometimes, right? Bam will play, play the four. Yeah. We might, see, we might see the two big lineup uh, more than usual this year just because of, out of necessity. But especially the, the if real, they think is better, like even, especially if they yeah. think Yurt has improved. Yeah, and Deadman's back too. So the, the Heat have options, but the biggest issue is in the playoffs. Like, right? If you're if you get to the playoffs with this roster and you're facing Milwaukee and Caleb Martin has to guard Giannis, like, you're in trouble. Yeah. The regular season, they could survive, and they have time, like you said, until the trade deadline, until the buyout, you know, until the deadline for, for the buyout guys pass. Like, they have some time to to, to fill that hole. Um, but I think they can survive in the regular season with this roster because they have, the, you know, we know the Heat are creative. We know the coaching staff is going to find some solutions. Jimmy at the four makes a lot of sense. Um, so I think they have some, some ways to have a pretty good regular season record, but the whole point of regular season is to prepare for the playoffs and yeah in order to in order to really compete in the playoffs you need another four in this roster and i think that he know that yeah the question obviously is basically can caleb martin's improvement plus haywood highsmith plus uh yurt's improvement allowing more two big lineups equal what pj tucker gave you and you know on paper the answer is probably not quite but it's probably not super far off if you can't be yeah depending, Depending how high you are on Caleb Martin's uh, potential here. Yeah, and, and PJ Tucker was very good and very important. Yeah, but let's not. I mean, you have no one like him. He's obviously a very no. unique player too. Yeah, although I do. I mean, I'm not saying Hayward Highsmith is him, but I saw some similarities with in the way Hayward Highsmith plays. What? He, he's, he's, not, he's him. him. He's not him, but he is. Him. Yeah, right. But he, but I, he does have some similarities in what he brings to the to the court, like his, de yeah. his defensive versatility. Very long arms, has the body, is a solid three-point shooter, good screener, doesn't need the ball in his hands to be effective um, on offense. He has some of that skill. So that's why I, I really think Haywood Highsmith is going to play a pretty big yeah. role this year. Um, so, I, again, they, they have options. Are they P.J. Tucker? No. But they, ha they have enough to survive the regular season, but they have to find a solution or another guy by February, by March. I trade their to, line. Yeah. To, to, really, to really make a playoff run. Mm-hmm.
Um, speaking of PJ Tucker, uh, we, I mean, not a surprise, but we called it from the day that this, the PJ Tucker to Philly saga start. I think I said there will never be a, until the NBA changes the rules, there will never be another draft with 60 picks. And I, I feel very, uh, very confident about that assertion I made, uh, back in I don't know, May, when do we, when do we, June, I guess, June, probably. Yeah, I, I mean, there might be who, who's under investigation at this point. Is it Philly, New York? Philly and New York. Else? Is there someone else? I'm not sure, but yeah, that's uh, I think that's a safe assumption at this point, judging by kind of how the past. I, I'm surprised it's taken this long because this isn't new, right? No, it's but, not new at all. But once they did it with, uh, like I guess Milwaukee, Milwaukee was yeah. first, then right. Philly was, or then Miami was the next year. Obviously, both applied to this most recent draft. But once they did it with Milwaukee, they had to do it with because you can't just. Sing yeah. off Milwaukee. And the rules, I bet the rules will change in the next three, four, five years to like yeah. change the tampering like rules or, or window or something where it, they're basically going to say whatever because the it's New impossible York, to enforce. The New and York a invest- second round pick is not really a punishment. No, no, it's not. Um, the New York investigation is probably the most interesting one to me just because his dad is on the coaching staff. Yeah, like, and, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, and like his, I guess this, the father, like his agent's dad is the GM of the Knicks, yeah, I think, yep. right? Like, like how are they going to prove that? Like, it's family. Like, yeah. of course they, they're going to talk. So that's kind of like a, I'm really interested to see what, what, the, what the result is of that investigation. Because I don't know how you can, yeah, I'm sure the Knicks talked. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? Like, Everyone knew Jalen Brunson was going to the Knicks like weeks. Yeah, they were all agency. sitting courtside at a, at a yeah. Mavs uh, Warriors game together. But when his family, but like they were the there team, to watch his son and the uh, yeah, like so, yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um. All right. You got anything else? Um. In in Heat world, these going on these days. Did I miss anything else interesting? No, I think that's. Uh, I think we any did any, all, any dumb much. controversies? Any any fun Instagram scandals? Um. Jimmy's hair. Oh yeah, what's uh, well, I I, I kind of saw what what happened with that? Is he he's got like dreads now or something? He has extensions, you know. He's Jimmy oh, he being Jimmy, okay, living his best saying. life, enjoying the off season. He was in South America last week, and now I think he's in Nashville, um, playing pickup game, random pickup games in in Ecuador with dreadlocks. Um, yeah, it's Jimmy being Jimmy. And, oh, uh, I, I, uh, so Drew League's going on, right? Or it might yeah. be done by now. We got to get one of these in Miami. We have one. You seen Did it? Rick? Miami Pro League. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that happening now? Yeah, it's happening. You were in Italy, but yeah, yeah. it's like, that's kind of the other thing I was going to bring up. Okay. So Bama's, Bama's played in the, like, the last two weeks, and Donovan Mitchell played in the last week with Bam um, together, which kind of, as, as you Where would imagine, play? created. They play at, I think, Johnson and Wales? Is that what it's called? In North Miami? Yeah, yeah. Um, James Harden played in it, in it like a couple of years. It's been like a, two or three years now it's been going on. Okay. Um, James Harden played in a, a few um, years ago. I'm trying to think who else. I mean, there's a, there's a other NBA like John Wall has played in I think before Michael Beasley. Mm-hmm. Um, but Bam is Bam. Derek Jones are like two of like the most frequent guys. Okay. I mean Donovan Mitchell played in it last week, so there was some Miami chance in the crowd as Donovan Mitchell took some free throws. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that that obviously the hit Twitter and everyone was retweeting it. Um, but. Yeah, there, there is. I mean, it's not the Drew League, but yeah, it gets some good, get some good names over there. Yeah, in DC, uh, we had the Kenner League was the big one growing up, where like Kevin Durant would show up every once in a while. Obviously, Rucker has has been is probably like the originator of it. But Kevin Durant showing up at Rucker is one of like the great non NBA basketball moments of the last like fifteen years. Um, but yeah, Miami makes sense. Like. Is a is a good one for it. So I'm glad to hear that it's it's thriving a little bit. I didn't realize Donovan Mitchell was down here for it. I just uh, messaged you the link to their Instagram. But yeah, Darius Garland, Darius Garland's been playing there too. Oh, cool. Uh, pretty regularly. So we got some we got some guys. We get yeah. some guys. All right. Anything else before we uh, finish up here? Well, I just wanted to say that I finally watched Winning Time. I'm like months late, but oh yeah, I, did watch I still haven't finished Time. it. Honestly, I, I've enjoyed really? it. I just like kind of got off track. I think Better Call Saul came back and Barry came back, and um, and obviously it was happening like into the playoffs, basically when it was like our busiest time of the year. Um, so I haven't finished it, um, but I've enjoyed. Have you finished it? I finished it. Yeah, I binged it in my week, in my time off. Yeah. After all that, I finished it before you. I can't believe that. I know. What do you think? 
I thought it was good. I mean, I think the tricky part is like I thought it was entertaining. I thought it was well done. But the tricky part is like you know this isn't unique uh, opinion, but it's just hard to know what's true, what's not. Yeah. True. Like what's embellished, right? Like uh, you know, like the the out like the the storyline is generally right, but like yeah. the the in between moments of like drama like how much of that is scripted and how much of it actually yeah. happened that's that's kind of what i guess not bothered me but like left me kind of frustrated because I, I wish i knew like how much of that actually happened yeah obviously lakers like jerry west kareem magic have all been annoyed by yeah. it but yeah honestly you know who's the worst pe- people are the worst at telling their own stories so yeah uh, true like obviously like by all accounts so a lot of the jerry west like anger stuff is exaggerated although i i think the story about him like you know he obviously like the the stuff about him like not he quit being the coach like just kind of because he like you know like there there there's some hints of truth in it even if he's not literally throwing the uh finals mvp trophy through the window in the lakers office but like um and you know kareem i i think at least the he he never felt like he was kind of a jerk, but I think a lot of people felt like he was a little bit of a jerk when he was playing. Um, and obviously, like, there was probably some racism in that at the time. And he's been vindicated in a lot of ways as being one of the most thoughtful, like, NBA personalities of all time. Um, and I, I think, you know, Magic was kind of notorious for uh, a lot of the stuff that is portrayed in, in the show, um, even if it's not all 100 percent accurate. Um, but most importantly, what do you think of uh, Adrian Brody as Pat Riley? He looks just like him. He really Crazy. does. I, he's I, I, kind of like, in some ways, the highlight of the show that I've seen so far. I, I like um, the Jerry Tarkadian stuff was like preposterous to me. And like, it's kind of insane yeah. that that's all true. Is um, that true? Yeah, for the most part. Oh, wow. I, didn't, I, I looked some of the stuff up to like this fact check, but I didn't look that. I just assumed that wasn't true. Uh, I love <laughs> Jason Siegel, obviously. So it was fun to watch him uh, play yeah. um, Westhead. Westhead. But. Um, that was th- that was interesting to me because I I didn't know the whole dynamic of yeah uh, Westhead and uh, even um, Jack McKinney as well. Yeah, like, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that whole. I, I knew he got hurt in like a bike accident, but like I didn't know that like he pulled Pat off the announcing team basically. Yeah. And um, obviously, is it the next year that Pat becomes the coach, or halfway through the next year? I think maybe. Um, like it's, obviously, it happens pretty soon after. Um, so, but yeah, I, the, I, and I really enjoy the like Pat Riley hippie kind of portrayal, especially from that first episode where he's been retired and is just kind of like bumming around yeah. on Venice Beach, uh, playing, playing volleyball on the beach. beach. Yeah. 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 But I think yeah. that's true. I think that's, I, I believe that that stuff is true. Just like seeing, you know, obviously the way Pat talks sometimes is like very, like kind of out there, like very philosophical. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also, I think about all those Halloween parties, and you you can tell he had a he had a little bit of like a a hippie wild side to him, right? Yeah, I mean you've heard stories of like like that's not the first like no one didn't surprise me too much because I've heard stories like from you know other people that have written about Pat and all that like that that was kind of his origin story, right? Like he was just bumming around on the beach before he, yeah after his playing career, and then he became you know traveling secretary, I guess, and broadcaster for the lakers and then he got pulled yeah. to the coaching staff out of nowhere and yeah it's it's kind of interesting how pat riley became pat riley because he was yeah he wasn't really expected to be that right after his playing yeah, even though he was a very good nba player a, like yeah. a le- college legend he played for yeah. adolph Rupp at kentucky and was on he was the best player on kentucky when they lost to texas western in the the 60 1960 whatever the glory you know the from the movie glory road whatever, yeah. portrayed in that movie um but yeah it's i i that the portrayal of him is kind of in, in some ways the highlight of the show to me even though the guy who plays magic and the guy who oh, plays it looks just like, like him. incredible the guy who plays magic looks just like him and is great yeah it's like, mean, the I, first, I, it's like the first thing he's ever done quincy isaiah i want to say is his name yeah it's yeah like the first thing he's ever done too he was, I mean, it, it, there were moments I thought it was like really magic. Like, yeah. it was, it, the, it was really, really well done. And then mm-hmm. I know there's going to be a season two. So that'll be cool. And I'm sure Pat will be having an even bigger presence in that season mm-hmm. um, because he'll actually be the head coach for most of it, probably. Um, but I really enjoyed the first season. I just, you know, I, I just wish I knew what was true and what was. Yeah, I, I'll say it makes me want to read the book. 
I've never yeah, read true. Jeff Perlman book. So, yeah. um, also Chris Riley making an appearance in the show as, as Gillian yes. Jacobs from Community. So, um, yeah. and they're still married, obviously today. Like, yeah, no, I didn't. I I didn't realize that they were together for that long. That long, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, there were there were a lot of interesting things that I just kind of didn't realize. Namely, the first one is like the the to me the most interesting thing of the show was that dynamic between West and Riley. Yeah. McKinney. Like I didn't know any of that. And I thought it was a really um kind of interesting storyline to follow and kind of learn about. Um so that that to me was like my biggest I, I like that the most out of season one. Yeah. Obviously that I mean it's impossible not to love John C. Riley as, as Jerry Buss. Um, oh yeah, he was great. Yeah. And uh I gotta shout out Wood Harris as Spencer Haywood. Uh I forgot to mention him when I was talking about the, the guys who played the players who were uh yeah incredible in that show. So I uh, I only think of him as like every time I see him I think I remember the Titans. Yeah, well he's also in The Wire. I don't know if you've watched The Wire. I've watched The Wire. Avon. Yeah. Remember but yes, I think of him as Julius first and Julius. foremost. When I was like seven years old, that was like my oh. favorite movie. So. Still my favorite. Still movie. kind of is, yeah. <laughs> At thirty-three years old, still my favorite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, I think we can wrap things up there. Uh, you can follow Anthony on Twitter at Anthony underscore Chang, except he's on vacation this week, so we don't expect too much from him. Um. You'll be back next week, though. Are you are you uh back to work next week for the most part? For part of the obviously week. not a whole lot going on. Yeah, so. a part of the week. I mean, I'm in and out really until until training camp. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna you know, after the after baby's born, I'm gonna take most of like, like those next three weeks off, and then I'll come back media day. Yeah, whatever. We're like back. a month a month away basically from from media day. Two months. Um, well, it starts. Months. I think September, September 26 is media. Okay, so like two and a half. Two and a half months. Yeah. Yeah. So seven weeks. I'll be I'll be I'll be around, but I'll be yeah. in and out. Well, we'll pop in on, on episodes of this podcast every once in a while. You can follow sure. me at DB Wilson too. I'm starting to get busy again uh, with football, obviously back in, in full swing. Miami Media Day was on uh, Tuesday, um, occurring at the same time as the MLB trade deadline and the Dolphins <laughs> uh, screwing up once again. So, um, but we'll be back. I don't know if we'll be back next week. We'll kind of be back as, as news dictates and, and pop in every once in a while just to, to update things. So um, thanks as always for listening and uh, we'll talk to you guys a little bit later on.